Early in the 22nd century, humanity escaped from Einstein's cage. The giant ring-shaped engines of the node drive gave us the power to leap to the nearest star at many times the speed of light. After centuries of dreaming, we were finally free to leave the cradle of our whole world. It took us years to build the Earth's first colony ship. The Nova Maria was a symbol for all mankind. Soon it was loaded with humanity's best and brightest. They prepared to depart, ready to inherit a galaxy which we had long ago decided was devoid of intelligent life. The universe was all out there for our taking. <laughs> Someone should have told that to the Hivers. They came in silence. No statement of intention. No declaration of war. Without even a demand for our surrender. They hit us without warning. Within seconds, our dreams of peaceful expansion were so many burning meteors falling to Earth. We barely survived the first Hiver incursion. Years later, we would find that we had faced only a small nesting fleet. We had yet to see the full power of the swarm. But the Hive was not the only threat. When we ventured forth, we soon encountered the ruthless legions of the Tarka. And eventually, the phantom fleets of the enigmatic Lear. And so, we learned how to build bigger, stronger ships, more powerful weapons. Humanity had to explore, expand, and even conquer, just to hold our own in a universe where weakness was extinction. In order to survive, we learned to wield the Sword of the Stars. Chosen ones, born of the divine. We are shaped in the image of the great masters, born to serve them in the infinite depths. We are warriors, wise men, fathers, masters. And this is the time of our ordeal, the great silence, when we will prove ourselves worthy to join the immortal gods and hear their voices once again. It took years to rise from the world of our spawning. It took decades to reap the wisdom of our first quarry. But our wiles are unlimited, and our thirst for knowledge strong. We have lain quietly in the shadows for more than a century, skulking on the darkened hulls of dead ships, raiding the periphery for slaves and secrets. We tear apart flesh and steel, mind and memory chip, seeking the spark of truth, seeking the gods of our birth. And always, we hunger for more. The time has come. We can wait no longer for the great masters to return. Our numbers increase daily. Our children hunger. Our females lust for war. This galaxy is unworthy of its gods, overrun by ignorant, arrogant slaves, mindless insects, pompous lizards, chattering apes, blaspheming rebels. It is time to teach them all their place in a great scheme. They will learn to serve their betters or die. As it was commanded, so it shall be done. We will sweep all enemies from our path. In the darkness of this galaxy, we will forge an empire of light. 
We will be worthy. We will find the gods wherever they are hiding. We will end their silence and become their claws once again. Born of fire, born of steel, born of science, born of blood. Look to the skies, children of the dust, and heed my words. I am first among travelers, lord of the night sky, and leader of the clans. I am the voice of the starborn. While you crawled, we flew. While you dreamed of wings, we knew the stars. We came down to share with your ancestors, but we returned to find death. Our females slaughtered, our worlds picked over like carrion. You have laid us a banquet of sorrow. You have risen from your dark depths, your twisting tunnels, your dawn-reeking cities, your pitiful nests of stone, and your fields of blood. To lay claim to the very stars. Blindly you wander, violating the tombs of my fathers, and turning loose your pestilence upon my wives and daughters. And I say, enough. Real war is coming. The travelers will yield no longer to any who crawl in land or sea. Find some other place to build your foul nests and fight your petty battles. These stars are sacred and they are mine. So look to the skies, children of the dust, and see my coming. I am the dragon with a thousand wings. My people are no longer in hiding. And now, we dog in the skies. Like a murder of crows. You know, sometimes I will just spend eight minutes of my life, every so often, just rewatching those. Hello, hello, Tutal here, coming in, down our search button to bring you another video. A game that I love immensely. A game that will be replacing War on the Sea. <laughs> I am not in the mood to be playing that game for a little bit. And, um, I like War on the Sea where I have to slave for 30 minutes and then go. And my mic's on, yay. That last episode is entirely on me, obviously, because the mic was off. But, ugh, even if they just took the wrong just life hit the wrong time at that with that game so we just take a, again another little break from it because I'm not gonna blow my freaking top and um sort of the stars will be taking its place for a little bit obviously a very unpopular game now given the fact that it, it's from 2008 and I remember I don't think it I think it was released on Steam in 2008 I think it's an older um I just remember one birthday I got this game called Sword of the Stars, and um, it was awesome. I put it on my computer, I installed it, I played, and I fucking sucked. Because I was like eight, maybe even seven years old. I was young, and I had no idea what the fuck I was doing. I had to have been, no, I had to have been younger, because even then, hmm. Well, I was young. And I could never figure out how to build ships bigger than destroyers. And I'm like, the, Ameri the Americans, the human ships freaking suck. And then I tried other races and I just wasn't doing anything. And I, I even tried research and I just didn't understand the game. So I kept dying. And then I learned like, oh, I know how to build. Now and I learned how to build bigger and powerful, more powerful ships. Like the cinematic. Then I started to get my ass kicked. And then I learned more about the workings of the game. And oh my god. 
I usually just think it's, oh, research, move fleet A to point B, fight battle, conquer planets, and win. Yeah, no, it's a hell of a lot more complicated than that. I've played this game since then. I, on Steam, I can't, I don't know how many hours I have. Not a lot on Steam. But that's because I've only ever played the Sword of the Stars, the original, on disc. And I remember I got the DLC, The Murder of Crows and Born of Blood. Both two different discs and install that and then there's a the new one the Argo the Argos uh, shipyard Argos engineering one of the two and um, thankfully this complete collection here on Steam has it all <laughs> and uh, I just I just love this game now earlier I did post a video on what you would like to see me play as and uh, this is a little note for TC if you see this part um unfortunately I still can't get my game ranger to work so yeah but uh i've asked oh i need to make a new profile because for some reason they got uninstalled too tall but um for some reason we uh i oh shit my brain just took a shitter one moment um thinking 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 whatever you know, i'm just gonna jump to the next topic um you got two types of games this scenarios and custom scenarios are sometimes fun and uh I feel like this on a new hope, which is humans versus humans, which is down here, and uh, eventually you got other civilizations. If I remember correctly, but basically you fight, and basically Soul Force wins if we capture all frontiers, and the Frontier Alliance wins if they can maintain three worlds or capture Earth itself. A fun one is oh, they're fun. Human build an empire at least 10 worlds and hold them for 20 turns Tarkas conquer the earth and hold it for 10 turns that sounds like a fun one to do at some point the gathering is interesting you want you want fucking impossible the end of flesh that one's impossible because you're fighting AI and forget it this one is fun uh, I think nope that's just like a duel where is it this one, yeah, progression wars. This one's fun. Dominate galaxy of one thing, but what about the universe? This challenge of progression wars is unique. Build up your presence in a small galaxy as normal, but be prepared to send a fleet to next to the galaxy next door and start process all over again. Your fleet will grow in strength of design, and you'll bring some of your previous technology and money with you. But your opponents will get harder and harder. How long can you survive? That seems like it would be a live stream thing at some point. But we're not gonna play one of those. So. I used to watch, and still occasionally do watch, an old YouTuber, I say old, uh, who was once went by the name of Hunter Black Luna, and now goes by the name of Fusilier, and plays Sword of the Stars, and I loved watching him, just because it was one of the few channels that did Sword of the Stars. And it's just, th this game's amazing. Now, I'm not sure if I have any of my, um, there's two mods I used to have, Bastard Sword of the Stars, which is a massive overhaul, and, um... Oh, I can't remember another sort of star. It's something, but it changes some of the ships around so the humans get entirely new ships that, in my opinion, look not only so much better, but also are better, but also have a massive weakness. And if that mod is activated, I'll go ahead and show you that. And other, it, I like the mods, but the base game itself is still not only great, but still I learn new shit. Now, I'm going to put the AI... Uh, I want to say easy because this AI, AI, it's no joke. The AI is a bastard. Some of the times it is brutal, even on easy. No game is, no two games are ever the same. It does not matter. There are similarities in two games, but it's never the same. And to make life easier, I'm going to do random on everything. Uh, there's going to be six players. I'm going to do, uh, let's see multiples of six so I would say let's do 120 planets I can do it this way 120 I was gonna do 60 into that way everyone gets 10 but no we're gonna do 120 we're gonna keep the distance at seven light years although like, if you do this forget it you got one jump and that's it so we'll do average distance of seven light years uh, we're going to increase the resources by 10% and the size by 20. Yeah, we'll do 20. Or. Come on, 20. 
We'll do 20 resources by 18. It just makes life a little easier for everybody. Uh, initial treasury is going to be the same. Initial colonies, one, and technologies are going to be zero. I, that's how I like to start. I like to start with the bare minimum. No, no extra efficiency, no extra any of that. Uh, you can have alliances. Sometimes it's a little finicky. And you can have teams, and teams are grouped. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to have alliances. So you can have people work together or a free-for-all. And uh, that, might, that might save our butts at some point. Uh, and we're going to have the humans, hyver, targets, leader, Zulu, and more guy. And I just remembered exactly what I was talking about when I said we're skipping to the next, um, what's it called? Uh, topic. I made a video asking which ones do you want me to see me play as? You get the humans, the hyvers, the tarkas, the leer, which are easiest, I would say. The Zul, hardest, more guy. Second easiest. That you the hybrid and the Zool are probably the hardest. Just because the Zool, they can never keep a planet. And there are many ways to lose ships. Like, you can lose them in your travel because, like the humans, I'll explain more in the game. But, uh, you got the, these guys I would say are medium. I think sometimes it says down here somewhere. But it says, uh, Meet. It's basically like the hardest of the medium, you could say. Tarkins or Lear are probably the easiest to play as, because they have your traditional point and click. Morgai, the easiest of the medium. The humans, hardest of the medium. And the Hiver are probably the second hardest. And the Zul are probably the hardest, in my opinion. Now, some people are very good at the Hivers. Because here's the thing about the Hivers. Or let me start this out. The Hivers are probably the hardest at the beginning. It is... That it is the slow, it is ugh. They got some very tough ships, but later on, these guys become deadly. And there's certain ways you can prevent their strength, so you have to play against their strength, which is also their weakness, and I'll explain more in game. Because I've also been only just talking for forever. And you got the uh, Zul, which are, in my opinion, the hardest. They're also the hardest to fucking fight, because they're bastards. However, we're going to be playing as the humans, just because, <laughs> uh, one, I love the humans, they're, they're just honestly the best. Plus, they have one of my favorite, favorite lines. Basically, uh, you yeah, know, right here, I mean, it's when they talk about that, uh, the attack that we received in the beginning, open cinematic, and it's like, when we arrive, you'll find out, don't ever try to kick a blood simple monkey in the teeth. Now, let me see if I can find it. My favorite one is here at the bottom here. Where is it? Okay, so, when are we building after the destruction of the Hybers? Basically, it's lost. Most of the human spacers have bitter memories of the Hybrid attack and are old enough to have lost friends and family in the fires, floods, and chaos that followed. Accordingly, Although the official motto of the Space Corps is Per Adura Ad Astrea, through hardships to stars, the unofficial motto of the human space is Repesium Es uh, Kinesia, which Payback is a bitch. <laughs> it's like, yeah, Payback's a little bit of a bitch. And you can see the word Dreadnought, insert Sabaton here. Basically, we managed to use our old nuclear weapons to beat the shit out of the Hiver Dreadnoughts. At least beat the shit severely damaged and destroy it. So we're gonna have humans. Uh, we're gonna have hivers. We're gonna have Tarkas. We're basically gonna have one of every single race. And I, I love doing this just because it's, it, it's I don't know. It, it's how it should theoretically be. Theoretically, sometimes there's different Aussie colonies, and you can find independent colonies that have either reached space phase or not, it, and you can simulate them. Even other, like, species, if you get the research enough, you can just simulate colonies. Which is pretty useful. It helps save a bunch of time, but you do have to go out of your way to research it. Plus, the human ships probably look the freaking coolest. System Man, update. there you just saw a hiver getting fucked over by a, uh, ooh, this is one of my favorite kind of maps. By the, uh, Tarka. 
They're lizard people. Hivers are bugs. Tarkas are lizards. Lear are like dolphins. Uh, Zul are a weird alien genetic modified race. And Morgai are birds. Now this is actually... This is good. I also like that we started on an edge. So we're quite secluded. We're in a corner so we can focus our defenses. Now as humans and... We have to travel versus, as you can see, we have lines. If I were, say, the Tarkas, I could fill a tank, a fleet with a bunch of tankers and just go right to here. Or if I wanted to, go here, down here. Same thing with the Lear. I could go all wherever, as long as I had the fuel. The humans, not so much. We have the single fastest FTL. Our ships are the fastest when it comes to FTL. And I think also the fastest in tactical ship, in tact in the tactical view. Because we use standard, because of our standard propulsion, you could say. In uh, the tactical view, we just use our standard engines at the back, push forward, and we go flying forward. And then if we need to slow around, we turn the ship around, burn retros, and then go back the other way. Some fleets, like the Lear, have skipper drives, what they're called. And what they do is actually take the mass of the ship and do little micro teleport jumps. So they basically just hover around it's their ships are ridiculously maneuverable because they are weightless they have no mass it, it nullifies the mass which is a good thing and a bad thing there's a very good trick to, against the Lear because their ships don't move and uh, I'll explain more once we actually get into battles probably plan to go along oh and I didn't pick my favorite colors or pick this or pick my thick guy but whatever uh, normally I would pick somebody else but we'll deal with it I wanted to get into the game. But uh, we use what is called node lines. That's what these lines. They're naturally occurring interdimensional connections between planets. Now, the Zool use the same thing as us. The only difference is that they can't use naturally finding, so they actually rip a hole through space. They rip a hole, and those things can collapse. Now, the thing about humans is because we can go only from planet to planet, so like we can jump here in like one turn. Whereas other fleets that might take two, or the Lear will take one, two, three, four. It, it could take a while for other people to get there, even the Zool, while they're boring a node. We can jump here in one turn. So we're the fastest. But it means we can also be stuck by choke points. Like, let's say, for example, right now, the only place to get to this planet is probably through this. And I say probably, because these lines, they're not guaranteed. They are actually a random chance of these natural occurring lines happen. It's a low chance that they don't happen. It's a very high chance that they actually pop up just because of gameplay-wise. Because if it was like 25% chance of a natural thing happening, yet yeah, the humans would go nowhere and they would just they would they would just lose. But there is a chance of there not being no natural collection, and then you gotta go through uh, sublight travel, and uh, yeah, that takes forever for the human ships. So, but. Uh, the only way to get to here will probably be through this planet. And that means if there was an enemy colony here, all they would have to do is just fortify the shit out of this planet, and then I would have to do... The only thing I could do is just start punching a fist at that wall until either my fist breaks or the wall breaks. <coughs> but the thing is, humans are very, very good at doing that. Like, it's very hard to stop a human player. Once they get going, they're gone. And if they need to, they like... The humans are very fast at re strategic. Strategically, the humans are the fastest. Now, when we start out, I always start out this up here. Up here, we have our savings, our, which is down here, our research, how much money we put into research and savings. Here, we have our portrait, our color, and our symbol. I'm okay with the symbol. Color, I can deal with. I hate that portrait, but whatever. Uh, I almost, I really want to change that, but whatever. Here we have our, basically, it's an overview of where our money's going. We have how many colonies, how many fleets, explored systems, enemy colonies, history that has happened, and our statistics. We have nothing because it's obviously the start of the game. Down below we have research, design, and build. So first off, we're going to go to research. Here we have the history of what we've researched. Excuse me, and you already, uh, like for example... Uh, we do always start off with basic energy, basic ballistics, basic communications, and you immediately start off with trans uh, uh, level four in 
uh, Xenobo Xenotech for the race you start out with. These, I have no idea how they really work other than, like, I think this helps with bioweapons. Yes, there are bioweapons. You can commit war crimes in this game, which is funny, meaning this game cannot be sold in Australia. Props if you know exactly what's going on with that. Then you have your uh, industrial, which is very, very good. Your biological, which will be useful. You will need that, so don't ignore that. Your drones, cybernetics, which isn't just drones, but also like uh, factories, weapons, and at some point, the massive risk of AI. Careful with that. Node focusing, which is a special. So star drives is particularly for the specific race star drives. We have the node drive, which is called, using the uh, super string theory. Now we can do it. We can upgrade to a node focusing, which is star drive upgrades are technically cheaper. It will they they are cheaper because they don't take as long as to do power technology. So these are quick and easy ways of actually getting basically more efficient uh, range and speed on a strategic scale. Though here we have our warhead weapons. So we have our shape charge nuclear warheads, dumb fire racks, which are pretty freaking interesting they're actually basically it's a bunch of missiles together that just go bleh and with ships that have lots of point defenses these are very good because they actually these things can't get shot down by point defenses and nuclear mines I have I have no idea how to use mine layers and I think I might try this game around unfortunately we have not started with a single shield technology but that can change you see I'll explain more after I go through the rest of these. Power drive, good. We have a thing called pulse vision. This is a random. Uh, you know, hell, I'll start with now. This tech tree is never the same. Sometimes it is, but more often not, it's never the same. Every single one of these has multiple trees. Like, the trees are massive, but it's completely random at what you start with. For example, these ones, yeah, you're going to start with this. Like, the main core, like, from here, you get... Uh, things up to cruisers and yeah cruisers and dreadnoughts and flak some stuff you immediately will get like every nation every nation every one will start out with gene modifications and all the units all the units will unlock three things orbital found or orbital foundries um reinforced units or something that or heavy construction which allows for a new bridge but it should this is actually a roll of the dice unlock two things laser coating or reflective coating to go with lasers and structure and a better armor basically think of like going from Krupp to Krupp 2 or Harvey or nickel to Harvey armor like that type of thing those are random you might not get those now you can get them after battling an enemy that may have it and if you have a repair and salvage ship you can salvage and pick tech out of that which is really cool to unlock stuff but it's completely random like, we might not even have gotten dumbfire racks. And that's rare to happen. Because that's a weapon. Well, I say that. Some weapons you can't get. Pulse Vision is one of those also. It's very useful for early game. Especially for humans. Because this gives us tactical speed and strategic range. Which is something we really want. An improvement of the Vision, vision Drive that releases Drive Plasma and High Powered Pulse. Yeah, when you don't get that, it's a bit of a problem. Because then the next best thing you can get is fusion for power. And, or, f yeah, fusion. And, uh, that's a lot of turns. Now, a fusion upgrade increases just everything. It's just flat out better. Granted, it's more costly, but by that time, hopefully you have your economy set up. This is going to be a lot of talking in these first e in this first episode or so. But, uh. That's what I'm looking for. But it also increases, like, gun mounts. Now, for example, dreadnoughts? You can't build dreadnoughts unless you get fusion. So, you can't just stay with uh, fusion drive. Photonic torpedoes? I have not used these, but they seem like they'd be very interesting. Especially for the battle bridges you can get. Or different types of deal, basically. I haven't used these, but... I don't think, yeah, these ones can't be shot down. Some torpedoes can be shot down. You can target stuff, which is 
something I love in this game. Like, you can individually target the missiles and try and hit them with your main guns. Not the best and easiest thing to do unless you have, like, lasers. Or even emitters, which I'm glad we have because they're very good. They're actually pretty damn good in the form of taking out smaller craft. Particle beams are very, very good, but unfortunately, it'll take a while for us to actually use those. And it looks like we actually might be going down the energy weapon route just because we have all this stuff. We got plasma cannons, green lasers, particle beams. So we got VRF technology, mass drivers, and a sniper cannon for the Goss Drive. Or Goss Driver, which is basically a slug. A dense metallic sphere at very high speeds at the target. These things wreck Lear ships because they have no mass. So if the thing with the Goss Drivers and the funny thing about them is that if a ship has a bunch of armor, sometimes the Goss Driver can't get through. And sometimes some of the funniest stuff happens when you actually hit the damn thing, but because it's mass and you're in space and you're shooting a high dense metal ball with a shit ton of energy and it hits an object it can't go through with physical force, like it physically can't penetrate, that energy's got to go somewhere and it gets transferred to that ship. So it's not uncommon to see a, a little destroyer with all the armor get hit by a massive ballistic weapon, a mass driver or something, and it just starts spinning out of control. It is the funniest shit ever. Unfortunately, when it starts doing that, it's really hard to hit, even with fire control technology. That's where lasers come in handy, so you kind of want a slight mix of like, of like ballistic weapons and lasers, and some enemies you want to like, for example, Leer. I'm going to do heavy on the Pretty much any Lear ship we fight, we want to fight it with a ship with mass drivers just because that mass, they get hit by that weapon, they move a little bit, but then they go right back to where they were. And I don't know if that actually stresses the ship out even more because it's forcing the the uh, mass and velocity and all that, but it just makes them a hell of a lot easier to hit when you hit them in the first place. Ballistic weapons, very inaccurate at first. But they do, they always do more damage, for the most part. But early on in the game, we're pretty much going to be sticking with lasers for a little bit. Now I'm debating which ones. Is this a uh, light or medium mount? I can't tell. Anywho. So I'm thinking what we're going to start doing is immediately do Waldo units. These things... This is useful because it gives us a new bridge, the Hammerhead Bridge, which is very useful. It gives us ship's construction costs. It lowers it by 10% and an increase in the industrial output of planets needed. Research computers and up here you have this thing online. called Special Technology Labs where you can research to salvage and occasionally get really interesting stuff. You can also mess with your savings here, like you can make it one turn. Don't do that because you're not going to gain any money. So I normally like to do half. I like to keep my research at half. So it's gonna take two turns instead of four. Now I'm that's if now that prediction of two turns is if I don't spend anything, I'm gonna be spending shit. Probably gonna go right down to zero at this point. Here we have our design. Let's go to our designs. And here are our ships where we can see. We have an armored, and it gives the which is the mission. So it tends to name them after missions, at least for the humans. Or humans for the uh, player. You can rename them, and I and I will re be excuse me rename them. So we have the standard command is basically the least expensive, basically that's what it is. It's just there to be a command ship. We have the mission, which is an armor, which is basically your warship, thick hull, and covered with a variety of weapons, and our fission. Slow but inexpensive, basically cheap of the cheap, and this is what we would be building right now. I'm deleting all this. Immediately going to the armor, standard command, and we're immediately changing everything to lasers. Now you can click and go through every so often, like every, every, like this, but if you just right click and right click on that, it changes all of the available. Very nice. And another neat thing about this is that it says there's one gun here. There is only one gun. That one just means the uh, weapon groups. That's all that means. Here on the side, it shows only one red laser, but there's actually three of them. One, two, three. So sometimes, like for the, for the human destroyer, 
theoretically a full broad you want to go broadside so you can get all the guns to bear so you can get one two three four however a human ship it is very hard for you to get broadsides however these guns can shoot still shoot straight forward so and even though it says like you can't shoot anything here the ship might be wide enough these guns can still aim at a part of the ship which works so we can do lasers because they're all gonna hit and uh, we're gonna keep the missile launcher very useful this single missile launcher very good you can turn it into a medium mount which has dual barrels but the missile is just so much better for now until they get point defenses and sometimes missiles aren't very useful or you can do the whole you die in missile swarm and we're not going to name this as an armor. We are going to name this as... Hmm. What should we name this as? Hmm. You know what? I'll name it this. I'll name it after the Mahan class. Yes, sir. I like the name of the stories after real life for destroyers. Construction. Now, this one is the uh, salt shuttle. Very useful for attacking planets. I never understood how to use this for the longest time. 36 minutes. I think I can get some more talking. Now, because this thing's going to be fighting a planet, we're actually going to switch these to Gauss. Because a projectile works a heck of a lot better than a laser. Because a laser is just ultra, just UV, UV rays. And high tense freaking light. A planet gets hit by a sun that has atmosphere. It will dip. Sometimes it'll dip. Uh, dispense all the laser energy in the atmosphere and then you're just shit out of luck you're not doing any damage to the planet sometimes they are strong enough to actually go through and hit said planet however these things work immensely because it's only gonna get faster and I don't think they burn up in the atmosphere now that I think about it I don't think the atmosphere works. It feels like it works because lasers don't do shit, especially these small lasers. And these things work pretty fucking well, even for being so small. Like taking a mini asteroid and just slam it on the planet's Earth. Yeah, planet's Earth, planet surface. Yeah, it, it works pretty damn well. So we're gonna save this. I named these after insects. So B. Design entered Careful. into naval archives. Uh, because whenever you make ships and fleets, it goes in alphabetical order, which is freaking annoying but as long as you but you can fix that easily by uh, getting a command ship which is gonna be the next thing we probably research colonizer very useful because how else are you gonna get your people from A to B now which one's cheaper okay I make these as cheap as I can get so save these colonizer mm. Do it home. Yeah, yes, home. sir. Ship design ready for construction. Extended range. These things are pretty nice. They are basically massive field tanks for more range. So right now we can only go nine light years, and that's far, but not far enough. The uh, extended range can go up to twenty-seven. Now, if we have tankers, we can go obviously a lot farther. They can still only go nine range in a single jump. But we're going to switch these to lasers because these are pretty much our scout. And they have a pretty pretty mean bite on their spine. One, they have four guns on the top and one on the bottom. Once you get uh, fusion, you actually get another one on top. And the hammerhead is going to have another one. So eventually, these things are going to be personally with guns. You should just get more guns. You know, guns, guns, guns. Take the Brooklyn class approach. So we're not going to name you ER for extended range. We're going to name you Mon... Mon... Me? The Monmi. You're gonna have to the Monmi class because you're a Design scout. Entered you're also very archives. fucking weak. See, the armor is 1,220. 1, Seems like a lot. Actually, a lot more. It's not. It's only 220 less than the Mahan, but that that actually does make a difference. Plus, these things are field tanks. They explode. Yeah, for you're close enough to this ship and it explodes, you will take damage. There is explosion damage in this game. In the colonizer, I think, is the weakest. Or is it the tanker? Yeah, no, tanker's weakest. Okay. Light defense platforms. I'm going to name, put these with uh, lasers for now. LP or LD. Uh, we'll name this 
And I obviously don't have the mods, so. Let's just give it an LD. That works. Yes, sir. Ship design ready and tanker. for construction. Keep your gauss cannons because you're not shimp. You shouldn't be in a fight, and by the time we pull you into the fight, it's fucking game over. One we'll name you Mobile. After a certain gas design company. Design entered into naval archives. Okay, so we have our first few ships. This list is gonna get a hell of a lot longer. I'm telling you that much right now. Now we need to build. We have four planets. I'm immediately gonna go to the mommy. One, two, three, four. Two turns, they'll say. Let's. Shipyard we're going to increase our up. construction. So. Now I should go down the next turn. I always have it at full, but I'm gonna actually gonna. See if I can just get this as low as I possibly can. So it's. Like one turn. There we go. Now we're not putting everything. Now we drop. It's a lot less money. And now it says three turns instead of two turns. That's not a guarantee. This thing can go over budget, and oh my god. God, I sometimes want to stab the scientists. All players are loaded, and let's start the turn. Three second countdown. System update. End of turn, and I think that's where I'm going to cut this episode. I'm going to do, I'm going to be playing this up until it's my live stream time. So, I'm like, wanted to see where I'm like, oh, okay, I need to stop after 30 minutes. I think I can keep playing. I might even continue recording afterwards. So, yeah. But I'll try and do my best to cut and notify when the video will end. So, because like right now, it's long. So I'm going to do this in like a massive sitting because it's just a lot more fun. So, yeah. I hope you guys enjoy this. This is Sutal saying thank you for joining me on this Let's Play of... I almost said War on the Sea because that game is so... been the freaking main thing on my channel. And this, at this point, I need a fucking break of it. But this is sort of the stars. A much better game. I'll beat it much more at times. Hard. This game. This game can be unforgiving. Especially when the end bosses come. One of their bosses is usually push over the peacekeepers. Fuck them. They're just pieces of assholes. I found a way to actually beat the shit out of them. It's going to take a while though. And. Um, there's a few other ones that are like. Fuck you, you're dead. So, yeah. Stay safe, and as always, have an awesome, awesome day.